Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Mesechis Pesachim DAF Kuf Yud Ches discusses the end of the Seder where we say Hallel and Hallel Hagadol over the fourth cup of wine, what we call Nirza. The Gemara will discuss what exactly is Hallel, what exactly is Hallel Gadol. The Gemara will explain a number of the Psukim within it and several other Psukim within Tehillim as well. So the Gemara begins by quoting a Baisa, which says, You pour the fourth cup of wine, and over it you say Hallel and Hallel Hagadol. Rav Tafran says you also say the 23rd capital of Tehillim in Parak of Gimel, which is Hashem Roy Le Echzar, Mizmar Le David, that we say by Shal So the Gemara. But it's the it's the phrase Hashem Roi Lo Echzer that we're focusing on because we're thanking Hashem for the food that we had during the Seder. So now the Gemara defines Halal Hagadol. Now Halal Hagadol generally refers to Tehillim chapter Kof Lamid Vav, which is twenty six Pukim, all ending with the phrase Kileilam Chazdai. The first one begins Haydu Hashem Kitev Kileilam Chazdai. So Gemara says, what exactly is included in Halal Hagadol, the Great Halal? So Gemara has three opinions. Rav Huda says it's just that chapter. Rav Achab Yaakov says it includes the chapter before that, uh, chapter 135, chapter Kufla Amad Hay. The Machlokas is showing him if it's the whole Kufla Amad Hay or it begins from Pasuk Dalit or possibly from Pasuk Gimel. Rav Achab Yaakov specifically says uh, it's from Kiyakov Bachalaka, that is Pasuk Dalid, but the Rishonim possibly learned that he means the entire chapter. Now, Rav Yechanan says it actually begins a uh, capital earlier. It begins in Kuflamid Dalid, includes Kuflamid uh, Dalid, Kuflamid Hay, and Kuflamid Vav. Those are all included in Hal HaGadol. Everybody agrees it does not include Kuflamid Zion, which is Al Naharois Bavel. Now, the Gemara says, why is it called Hal HaGadol? What's so great about it? So, Rav Yechanan says because it discusses how, how HaKadosh Baruch was on the highest levels of the universe, and it says, basar. He gives food, he gives bread, support to all living things. That is a very great, wondrous thing, and therefore it's called Halal Hagada. Now, Rabbi Shua ben Levi says, why are there 26 Pukim? What are the 26 for? Kumar says that there were 26 generations of the world before the Torah was given. What merit did those 26 generations receive their mizonos, their support, their food from Kaddish Baruch Hu, that was only through chesed. There was nothing that they did to deserve it. It was pure chesed, and that's the key lelum chazda, which we say 26 times in Hal Hagado. Okay, first pasuk. What does it mean? Hoydu Hashem Kitoiv, give thanks to Hashem because He is good. Kilem Chazdei. The Gemara has a drasha, and the Gemara says that He pays back a person. He gives a person kapara, atonement for things that he did wrong by taking away only what he has, not more and not less. And the way you understand it is that it's Kilem Chazdei because of His great chesed that He takes away the Kitoiv, the 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 things that He gave. So if somebody's rich and he has an ox, he'll take away his ox. If somebody is poor and he has a lamb, he'll take away his lamb. An orphan who only has an egg, he'll take that. And a widow who has a chicken, he'll take that. But he will not take more than that. Now, on the subject, the Gemara is going to sidestep here and discuss the uh, support, the mezaynes, the the sustenance that HaKadosh Baruch Hu provides for people. So the Gemara says, the Rav Yechanan says that earning one's living is twice as difficult as a woman giving birth. Because about birth it says be'etzev tel divanim with uh, suffering you shall give birth, but about sustenance it says be'itzavoin. It says itzavoin, which is plural. Itzavoin refers to so there's at least twice as much as etzev involved over there. Now Rav Yechanan says further, providing man's mizonos is more difficult than an actual geula. About geula it says hamalch hagoel osimikaro. It's just one malach that redeems you. However, about Mizanos, it says, Elohim Haroya Oisi. That is what Yaakov said. Ha Elohim. There you need Hashem Himself, Haroya Oisi, to uh, shepherd you, to provide sustenance for you. You don't just need a uh, Malach. Now, we've now referred to the curse of Adam Rishon. So the Gemara discusses the curse of Adam Rishon here a bit, which also relates to man's sustenance. The Gemara says, When a Kajbarch will curse Adam Rishon after they said that, he said, uh, you will have thorns that will grow for you, and it ends off, and it says, V'achol Ace Vasad, you'll eat the grass of the field. So the Gemara says, when Adam heard that, that was the worst thing. He began to cry, and he said, how can it be that I'm going to eat the same as my donkey? My donkey and I will eat the same food. I'll end up thinking like a donkey. We're, what will happen to my godless Adam? So Hashem said, okay, lechem. So you can sweat with your brow, and then you'll eat bread. You'll be uplifted from amongst the animals. And then Adam Rishon was relieved. 
So Gemara says that Rish Lakish says it would have been better off the other way. We wouldn't have had to work for food. Imagine if he didn't have to work, he'd be able to learn Tyre all day. But we're not completely lost because we do get to eat some things that we don't have to work for. There are a number of uh, fruits and vegetables that we could eat without too much work. It just grows for us straight. Now back to the subject of the difficulty of providing for man's sustenance. Gemara says Rav Shizvi says the name of Elizabeth ben Isaiah. It's as difficult as Kriyas Yamsuf. Why? Because two psukim are near each other. Nois and lechem b'chol basar and goes yam sof providing food for all living and dividing the yam into parts. These are two psukim in Koflam and Vav again in Hal HaGadol. Now, Gemara says other things are also like uh, the difficulty of Kriyas Yam Sof. Rebbe Lezben Azari says constipation. If a person's uh, evacuation system doesn't work, it can be as painful and as difficult as Kriyas as Kriyas Yam Sof. How do you see that? Also by two psukim put together, this time in Yeshaya. That which is closed will be quick to open, and he will not die into the pit, says the Pasuk. Um, and right after that it says, I am Hashem who split the sea and its waves that were angry. So you see these two psukim together, link Kriyas Yamsuf and relief from constipation to show that they are equal difficulty. Now, Rabbi Zabon Azariah has quoted a number of things here. We've quoted that, we have quoted a number of things from Rabbi Zabon Azariah, which teach us uh, comparisons. So the Gemara now brings a few more other things that Rabbi Zabon Azariah learned from Pazukim that were placed close together that teach us comparisons. The Gemara says, Rabbi Shesha says in the name of Rabbi Zabon Azariah, anybody who is not careful with Yom Tov, doesn't keep a properly, it's as if he was over to a zara, like it says, okay, ma'asecha le'sasa lecha, don't make yourself metal gods. Right afterwards it says, Chag tishmar, keep the Chag of Pesach. Rabbi also says in the name of Rabbi Zabon Azariah, anybody who speaks Lashon Hara, anybody who believes Lashon Hara, or anybody who says false witness, should be thrown to the dogs. Where do you see that? Pasuk says, like, The end of the mm, Pasuk describing Trefat says, Throw it to a dog. And right after that it says, Don't take a false report. Now that means, Don't bear false witness. Uh, that means, Don't believe uh, negative comments. It also means, You shouldn't say it, Either through Lashon Hara, Or through false witness, By reading, As lo sasi shemashav, Which means, Do not make somebody else believe or hear a false report. Okay, but now we shift back to Hal HaGadol. So Gemara says, why do we say um, regular Hal if you have Hal HaGadol? Hal HaGadol is greater, so what's the point in regular Hal So Gemara says, regular Hal has five important things in it. It has Yitzis, Now the Gemara finds them all in Hal you see, it's Mitzrayim, leaving Mitzrayim, that is straight out, like it says, Betes Yisrael Mi Mitzrayim, an entire chapter about it. In that, you have a discussion of Kriyas Yamsov, splitting of the Yamsov, as it says, Hayam Rav Yanais, the sea saw and ran away. Where do you see a reference to Matan Taira? There also it says, Sahar Mraktu Kalim, the mountains danced like rams. What was that about? That was when they all came and wanted to be the one in which Harsinai, they all wanted to be the one on which the Torah was given, says they all came and they fought for that honor. Um, that's what's referred to here, and therefore it's a reference to uh, Matan Torah, Ma'amad HaSinai. Now, where do you see resurrection of the dead? So further it says, this Halech Lefnei Hashem Ratzachayim, a walk before Hashem in the land of the living. That's referring to somebody who's revived from the dead. And where do you see Mashiach? So it refers to the trials, the trouble before Mashiach, the Chevlei Mashiach. It says, Le'lonu Hashem Le'lonu, Rabbi Yechanan says, that's referring to um, one of two things. Either we're asking Hashem to help us get out from under the Goyim's d- d- dominion and the trouble that they're causing us, which is a Mashiach thing. Could also be referring to the War of Goy Gomogay, which immediately precedes Mashiach and is part of the Chavli Mashiach. Now, let's give another reason. Why do we say Halal and, and not just uh, Halal Hagadol? Or why most Yomim Tovim do we say Halal and not Halal Hagadol? So Nachman Yitzchak says, because it contains a reference to the Risham getting out of Gehenna, like it says, Ana Hashem, Mal Tanafshi, save my soul. Chizki gives another reason, because it refers to the Tzadikim who went down into the Kivshon Eish, into a fiery furnace, and they got out of it. Where do you see that? Sigmar so says that Hanani Mishal Vazaria, which were sent into a burning fire, into a massive furnace by Nebuchadnezzar for refusing to bow to his statue, they each said some of the Psukim in Halal. Sigmar so says, um, Hanani said, Leilanu Hashem Leilanu, Ki Lashemcha Tein Kava, it is what Mishal said, and Azariah said, Achazra Vala Amidcha. 
um, they all three ended off Lama Yamru Hagayim. Why should the nation say, Where is their God? Now, what did they say when they came out of the Kivshanesh? So Hanani said, Halo as Hashem called Gayim. Hanani said, Shabchu called Umim. And Mishael said, Kigavar Lenu Chazdoi. Um, and then they all said, Vemas Hashem Lailam, Hallelujah. Some say that the phrase Vemas Hashem Lailam, Hallelujah was said by Gavriel. Gavriel, who's Gavriel? Gavriel is a Malach who was in charge of fire. Now, what did Gavriel have to do with this? So the Gemara says that when Nimrod threw Avram Avinu into a Kivshan Eish, Gavriel came to Hashem and he said, let me cool off the fire so I could save him. So Hashem said, no, I'm going to do it myself. Avram is unique on earth and I'm the unique in the universe and therefore it's befitting for me to save him. However, because you were volunteering to save him, I'm going to let you go and save Hanani, Mishael, and Azariah and therefore Gavriel was there in the fire with them. Now, Shemun HaShilani says that when Hanani, Mishael, and Azariah were actually thrown into the fire, there was a different Malach who wanted to take care of it and his name is Yurkamo and he is the Malach of a hail. So he said, listen, I got plenty of ice. Let me cool it off. So Hashem said, no, I'm going to give it to Gavriel, because if you cooling it off, it's not such a big deal. It was actually Gavriel who said this, Taina. He said, if you, that Mr. Hale, cool it off, it's not such a big deal. Hale counteracts fire. We know that that cools it off. It won't be such a major nace. or be a major nace as if I, the Malach of fire, come and cool off the fire. That means fire itself is cooling off the fire, and part of the fire will still actually be hot. As it says in the Pesukim Lear, that the fire did burn Nebuchad and Netzar's servants. Or busy throwing Hanani Mishal and Azai into the fire, but they themselves were saved. And that is when Hashem said, Go. And Gabriel said, Vemis Hashem Leilam, Hallelujah. He said that Pasuk out of praise. Now, another opinion who said, Vemis Hashem Leilam, Hallelujah. So the Gemara says it was actually the fish in the sea. There says fish in the sea. Yes, it was a conversation between the Fish in the sea, referring to, or possibly the sea itself, and Hashem, when Kali Yisrael were leaving the Yamsaf, on their way out of Kriyas Yamsaf. So the Gemara says that those uh, people then, Kali Yisrael at the time, were afraid. They did not have full faith, and they were afraid that Mitzrayim was coming out on the other side of the Yam, and they were going to come and chase them again. So Hashem said to the Yam, spit them out onto dry land, spit out the the dead Mitzrayim onto dry land, so that Kali Yisrael could see them and be certain that they had died. So Umar says that the sea said, what do you mean? You gave me a gift. You gave me 600 chariots. Why are you taking it away from him? So Umar said, back to the Yam, I'll give you one and a half times as much in repayment. Umar says, very funny. You're going to give it to me. How am I going to collect it from you? Uh, I'm your servant. I can't come claim things from you. So Umar says, so Nachal Kishon will be the Arif. The, the Kishon r- river will be the guarantor. Okay, when I heard that, the Yam spit it out. And the Kali Yisrael saw the, the Mitzrayim dead on the seashore, and they were encouraged. Now, when did they get their repayment back? So Gemara says this was in the days of Sisera, when Barak and Devera chased Sisera, they had 900 chariots. Now, what happened? Hashem took the stars out of their orbits and made it very hot. Sisera and his army became very hot. Now, Sisera and his men had technology that was far ahead of everyone else. They had iron. Everybody else just had bronze. But Sisera's iron became very hot, and they needed to get the armor off. So they took it off and went for a swim in Achel Kishon. So Hashem said to Achel Kishon, go play, go pay off your pledge, your guarantee, and the Achel Kishon swept them away and pushed them all out into the Yam. Once they were all out into the sea, that was where they drowned, and there you had 900, which is one and a half times as much as the 600 from before. And that's why the fish said, Hallelujah. All right, now the Gemara goes further and explains a number of the Sukkim that are in Hallel. Gemara says, What is meant by Meshivi, Akeras, Abayas, Ebermanam, Samir, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, return the main part of the house? The main part of the house generally refers to the woman. The Gemara interprets it here as referring to Ka Yisrael describing themselves as the foundation of of the house. And Kaisal were complaining that they're no longer the uh, Zikanim of Yisrael were complaining that they no longer have their Chasser respectable position like they did before. And they said, Moshivia Karas Abayas, you made me uh, like a weasel that lives in the foundations of the houses. You made me Moshivia Karas Abayas. I'm now like the foundation. They uh, didn't consider themselves to be on a high level anymore after you see Smith's because everybody had already experienced that high level. Now, Rava says further, what is meant by a hafti ki ishma? 
So the Gemara says, you read it as a Haftani, and Kaisal said, Hashem, when am I beloved before you? When you listen to my tefillah, and uh, then I become a huvalofanecha, I become beloved before you. Next, what is the meaning of that? Lo Yeshua, I became poor and he saved me. Gemara says, Kaisal said to Hashem, Rabbi even though I am poor now, that lo I am poor now, not I was poor, I am poor now, still you should save me, uh, a, I am yours, I belong to you, and therefore, it is proper for you to save me. Now, the Gemara brings a number of uh, things which were taught by Rabbi Yishmael, son of Rabbi Yaisi, when he became sick. The Gemara says, Rav Kahana says, that when Yishmael was ill, and he he had said that there were a number of things that he learned from Rabbi Yaisi, his father, that he hadn't taught yet. So Rabbi sent him a message, Rabbi Yishmael, he said, can you teach us some of those things so they shouldn't get lost? Now, this Gemara appears many times in Shas, and each time uh, Rav uh, Yishmael taught different things, it's possible they were all taught at once, or possibly he became sick a number of times, but either way, here we have one such thing, and there's a few things that he sent. The first one relates to this, and it's what is the meaning of the passing in Hal Halos Hashem, Kol Goyim Shabuchol and Praise Hashem, all you nations, why are the nations? Why should the nations be praising Hashem? Because Hashem saved us, they should praise Hashem. Skimmer says that the meaning is that you should be praising Hashem for what you did, for what Hashem does for you. So most certainly, because of His amazing things that He does for us, Ki because He has such tremendous chesed that He does for us, we should certainly be praising Hashem. Other things that Rabbi Shmuel sent at the time, he said that in the future, when Mashiach will come, Mitzrayim will come, I want to bring a gift to Mashiach. And Mashiach will say, why should I accept the gift from Mitzrayim after everything they did to Klai Yisrael? But Hashem will say, no, you take the gift from them because they did provide a place for Klai Yisrael to live for a couple of hundred years. And once it happens, Kush, Ethiopia, will come and they say, look, if Mashiach took a gift from Mitzrayim, they'll take a gift from us also, and they will bring a gift as well. I didn't even enslave them. And HaKadosh Baruch will say to Mashiach, yes, take their gift as well. And they will take the gift, and that's why the Pasuk says... Kosh Taretz Yadav Leiloi Kim. Um, about Mitzrayim, earlier it said, Yes, Sayu Chashman and Mini Mitzrayim. I guess we'll be both from Mitzrayim. Anyway, after Kosh will come the Romans. The Romans will say, Look, I'm a brother with you, Saul. I certainly have a right to bring something. But Kaddish Baruch Hu will tell the Malach Gavriel to reject it. And he will say the following Pasuk will say, Ga'ar, Ga'ar Chayas Kone. Ga'ar Chayas Kone, Adas Abirim. Now, the Gemara has a few ways to explain this. The entire mm, Pasuk is as follows. It's a Pasuk in Tehillim, Samach, Ches. The Gemara will explain a number of the lines here. So, the Gemara says, Ga'ar Chayas Kana means rebuke the beast, Ga'ar Chaya, rebuke the wild animal, and Kana, on this you will acquire or you will embrace. Yisrael. Another pshat, Ga'achayas Kana, rebuke those who live between the Kana between the reeds. Like it says that Yecharsemena Chazir Meyar Viziz Sodai Yerena. The pig, the boar, lives in the fields and destroys Yisrael. That all that refers to Romans who compare themselves to a pig, a boar. Another pshat in this is of Chibar Abba. He says Ga'or B'chaya. Yell at the beast, because of the kane, because of the pen that they use to write everything, every court case they have, they always rule that the Jews are guilty, therefore reject and uh, get rid of them. Now, the Gemara now explains the rest of the Pasuk, Adas Abirim Be'egle Amim, a gathering of the strong in the calves, as in young cows, of the nations. So the Gemara, what does this mean? The Gemara says because they slaughter the strong ones, meaning they slaughter the tzaddikim in Yisrael, like a bunch of calves, and like calves don't even belong to anybody. They just get slaughtered randomly. Next, the Pesach says, Mistrapes Beratze Kesef. They open its hand and take bribes. They take, so that's what they do. They take bribes, and they don't do the will of their owners. They don't do what it is that they promised that they were supposed to do, and they don't keep their half of the bargain whenever uh, the Romans make a deal with uh, anybody. Now, the Pesach says further, Pizer Amim Kravos Yech scatters the nations that want Kravos. Gmar says, why? This means, why are Kravos all scattered amongst the world? Because of Kravos, because they want to have friendships with the rest of 
the Goyim in the world. Okay, going further, Rabbi Shmuel has a couple of other things which he said over from Rabbi Yaisi at the time. He said like this, he said there are 365 marketplaces in Rome, in the main city of Rome. Each marketplace has 365 towers, each tower has 365 steps, and each step has enough food on it to support the entire world. This is how much food there is or will be in the time of Moshiach. So the Gemara says, who is all this food for? The Gemara says, it's for you and your chaveir and for everybody who learns the Torah. That's what all this good stuff is reserved for. Food apparently is a mashal for uh, real schar. And it's based on the Pasuk, Sachrav Ednana Kledush Hashem, Loye Otsav, Loye Chosin, Kila Yeshim, Lufne Hashem Yege. Merchandise and payment will become holy, even low level payment like that given to a prostitute will become holy. It won't be hoarded, it won't be treasured, people won't have to hold on to it. There'll be so much that there'll be enough for everybody. Um, granary of, of grain, wine, and oil. It won't be held on. Uh, treasuries filled with gold and silver won't be secured because it'll be enough for everybody. And who for? Uh, it'll be for, as it says further, Hashem, for those who sit before Hashem. Now, who's Yashem Lifne Hashem? Kumar says it's the one who knows the yeshiva, the one who is in yeshiva so much that he knows where everybody sits, or the one who sits in yeshiva first and he's there to greet everybody else. He's the Makabel Prechaveroi in the yeshiva. The Gemara now explains the rest of the Pasuk quoted before. It says, Mechase uh, Atik, one who covers the old. Which says, what's that? The Gemara says, that's one who covers that which was hidden by the old one. Atik Yemen that refers to Hashem. But he's also covering and not revealing things which Hashem covered and didn't reveal. And that refers to the secrets of the Torah, such as Maisim Merkava, Bria Solam, Kabbalah. All these things are supposed to be hidden. They, this one knows it, but keeps it hidden. Some say, no, it refers to somebody who reveals that which was hidden. And that's the secret explanations of the Torah that are meant to be understood and are meant to be known. Tame Torah, this is the revealed part, which may not be understood clearly any Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.